In the past episodes of the Build to Grow series, we've been covering how to position, how to price, and how to write copy for your next business idea. And now it's time to go ahead and transition this slab of text into a beautifully looking design for Authority Gorilla. And of course, we're gonna be adding a touch of AI as everybody's using AI these ages. So we're gonna be identifying how can we use it to our process to make sure that we can go live in two weeks or less. Plus, at the end of the video, you're gonna be getting the exact checklist that we use to make sure that our venture goes live in a smooth way as possible and that we don't have any bugs on the website itself. If this is your first time, welcome to our Build to Grow series. In this series, we cover our process of building a completely new Webflow SEO agency from zero to going live and finding clients. In the past few weeks, we've documented the whole process of building a business from the ground up online that you can also follow if you're building your next business, if you're implementing a new website for your company or for your clients. And the hardest part is finishing everything. Just because specifically for us, when we're working on kind of personal projects, going live can actually take a lot more time than you expected just because it's something personal and you want to make it perfect. So that's why for this project, we made a specific cap. We need to go live in two weeks. So after finalizing the positioning and the copy and everything was done and we know the business model we're going to be pursuing, we set a timeline. We have one week for design. We have one week for development. And in the end, we ended up with an additional week to go ahead and do quality assurance and to go live. But just make sure to set a timeline and to treat every single project with a strict timeline and to actually go live in the end. My philosophy is making sure that we go live as soon as possible to test the market, to test our pricing, to test the whole hypothesis in the best way possible before proceeding to invest a lot more time into any new venture that we do. And this might be contrary to what you're hearing today from uh, kind of some of the videos which are telling you that you can go live with no code in just a few hours. Yes, you can go live. We could have written a copy, we could have bought a template or something like that and kind of transitioned everything into a page in just one hour, maybe even less than that. But that's not how we treat business. I mean, like I like going the MVP route, but for me, the MVP route has a lot higher standard rate, like in my opinion, than like just cranking something really really quickly in order to go ahead and get live in today's age i feel like that you need to have on top of the positioning like a good brand experience so that people actually feel that they're coming to a unique website just because of that instead of saying we made this in a day we set two weeks time frame and then we finalize everything in three weeks and the website is also live down below so like that's why we also are covering a live example in in, in this series so you can see kind of how much the whole process takes and that it can take a lot more than just a few hours than you see online let's walk through through the 10 things that we've done to make the website go live in a authentic uh, and a luxury brand feel with also keeping the timeline really 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 tight the first part in our process was of course mood boards and stylescapes and one thing that i see people going here is like thinking that they're gonna know in which place the brand is gonna be taking over so you're, i'm gonna be showcasing the stylescapes that we had here which are completely different from what we wanted to do in the end because we started the stylescapes then we identified that we're creating something which looks like a template it doesn't feel like that we're creating a brand on its own so that's why we basically identified this is how we don't want to look like and then after that we made an actual like branded look in the end so you can see like a few of the examples that we followed so we went, went with the uh, illustration driven we went with the jungle driven like which is going to be playful and funny we went with a simple jungle themed we went with a very simple themed and then like we went uh, like with another very simple direction and like after going ahead and exploring like uh, these are five six directions we identified they're like, okay, we don't actually like any of this. Like, because we identified through the copy and everything how we want Authority Gorilla to stand. We identified the copy, we identified the bold brand, which kind of communicates that we know what we're doing and that we're the authority in the in the Wapo SEO space and that we can help you build authority long term and that we're gonna be legit. And nothing from these uh, kind of designs actually made sense. So after basically having these items and like having a design that which I didn't like as a CEO and a founder of this venture, and like our team didn't like, we were able to slowly identify hey we might want to go ahead and start using ai so you can see from everything we didn't like then we moved to this we identified let's start using ai to go ahead and play around like we generated these uh, illustrations kind of with ai like a, with an, a gorilla actually going ahead and looking at the laptop but we thought is this maybe too playful like are we going to be able to replicate this through the website just because this single image was easy to replicate and kind of create with ai but if we're going to need to create hundreds of these long term might not be a replica way to create a brand that's why you can see that in the final 
final direction we took, like I just a high level overview, we were able to go ahead and use AI to our advantage and start having some brightened elements we're going to be using across the website to make it really feel like ours. So the next part after the mood boards is of course AI. And this was not an easy process. I'm just going to show you our prompting process where we created things like these, which made no sense. And like we slowly were able to cater and craft AI to actually create something that we like and that we ended up using. The biggest tip I can give you is like, just try to find a texture or a style that you would like to have. And that's gonna be easily replicatable through the brand because we identified, hey, we're gonna be creating a gorilla with AI, but what if we need an icon? How is that icon gonna be created with an with AI that's gonna be similar to kind of to the gorilla? So we ended up with a paper texture just because SEO requires a lot of writing, a lot of kind of handwriting and uh, stuff like that, like copywriting in the end. So that's how we connected the kind of copywriting and like that world to paper. Then we used paper texture. So now we have a prompt we can use in mid journey to go ahead and generate quality assets, which are gonna feel on brand every single time when we create them. So you can see here that after creating the gorilla, we identified, let's start, exploring the paper texture a lot more. So we started creating plans. We started creating more ideas for the gorilla and kind of how we can create this. This was a fun idea, actually. I don't know why, why did we did not use uh, this, but yeah, it's, it's also a fun idea. And then after that, we started creating icons slowly. You're going to see some uh, random examples, but yeah, we started creating icons we're going to be using across the website in the paper texture itself. The biggest tip is like, if you have a short timeline, but you want to make sure that you deliver a great brand and you want to use AI, try leveraging prompts to create a specific texture, create a prompt for your texture, and then you can use that prompt to create elements which are going to be on brand in, in the long run. After we made uh, like all of the assets, we jumped directly to design. Like we transitioned all the slides lab of copy into the design itself and it makes the design part a lot more fun and a lot a lot easier i would say just because this way we're able to go ahead and add the copy and identify is the copy easily readable and how can we design in a way that it supports the copy so it's not just like that we have the copy itself slabbed and kind of maybe not easy to understand we want to make sure that we create a design which is going to make our copy as easy as possible to read and thus generate us more revenue in the end after the whole design part is like probably a hundreds of revisions which is going to be the next part because i'm really specific when it comes to design now, I, I like to say that professionalism into like doing the simple things right so that that's why we're really picky about like some simple items and how are people going to be proceeding our designs. So I left some of the final comments here. You can see for a single thing, uh, how many comments we added. We added more copy tweaks. We added more design tweaks just to make sure that it's as easy as possible to do. And that we have a single call to action, which is in our case, join the waitlist because we're still not publicly live, but you can view the link down below and go ahead and explore the, the website itself. One thing I would like to focus on is like, of course, the pricing, because this is where you can see kind of how a nicely designed the uh, process can help you in your website process and in general in the business process because this is a version of like for some reason Christina our creative director decided to destroy all of the old versions because she doesn't like them but I think we had like almost 40 different versions of the pricing tables the moment when we design something we show it to one of our clients and they're like this doesn't make sense I, what are you doing how are you doing it so it's really important to kind of come to the design part with a logical thinking and like with a uh, like psychological thinking of kind of how are we going to showcase this in an easy way as possible to make sure that we don't create something complicated and that we create something easy and in this process we actually changed the pricing because we identified that the previous pricing was a little a little bit harder than we intended to so just make sure that you actually spend time in the little details and that you start uh, maybe even showcasing your designs to some other people to, to see are they actually going to understand what you're trying to showcase and after the design process we went to handoff we like to make sure that our designs are pixel perfect so we have the design here we have all the hover states we have the development nodes on the side so you can see, see kind of how the uh, hovers are going to be functioning. We have uh, kind of development notes for the pricing, for interactions, requirements, empty states, and all of those things. And you can also see some of the icons we created here. So that based off of that, it, it's going to be as easy as possible to create a nicely developed Webflow page. Because yes, you can make a messy design and transition directly to Webflow, but you might not go the extra mile to go ahead and complete the original design imagination if you just go directly in Webflow. So that's why we have the first Figma complete handoff to make sure that the development is in the end going to be harder. And only after that, we migrate to actually developing a Webflow. So you're going to be able to see that right here. We added a mobile version just because 
because I like to create different experiences for mobile to make sure that it's easy to go ahead and understand. Then we created a style guide, which we're going to be implementing Webflow. So you're also going to be having a link down below to the style guide that we use for every single one of our projects. And hopefully, maybe at the time of you watching the video, like the Figma to Webflow plugin also has variables which sync to Figma. So this is a great way to have a style set in Figma and to sync it directly to Webflow that you can make the process of building the website that much faster. After this, it's to the fun part. We went ahead and cloned our flow starter style guide. So this is currently going to be updated to the new variable style guide. So just make sure to see is this updated with that or if not, like make sure to use variables as it was released pretty recently. In general, we always have a kickoff style guide which has some core components that we use for every single one of the projects and it's going to allow you to create a more systematic way of building websites in Webflow. After that, we move directly to the Webflow development. The way we like to look at the development is to make it as easy as possible for even our in-house marketing team at the studio to make changes and also like if we do that for the clients to make like to make the changes as easy as possible so that's why you're going to be able to see that the page is wrapped like we have the navigation in a symbol footer in the symbol we have the main wrapper which is going to be wrapping all of the sections so that you have an easy way to place everything and after that we have sections nested inside of it we use a pretty sim uh, simple class naming structure which just describes everything we're doing so like, we might even share a preview link down below so you can go ahead and explore how we name classes for a project so you can make that process a little bit easier for you. After developing the kind of the desktop version and everything like that and the static version of the page, it's up to leveraging the CMS in the best way possible. I mean, like you can see that we use the Webflow's CMS system to go ahead and add the team so you can see the team behind the project. So if we need to add more team members, like automatically we're going to be able to add them. We're going to be able to change the their images, like we're going to be able to change their order, LinkedIn and stuff like that. I like to look at Webflow as a way to make editing as easy as possible. So whatever you see on a website, I try making it a CMS because you're going to be grateful for that in the long run. So you can see that FAQs are also made with a CMS and how it works is also made with a CMS, which is a se section which is not going to be so easy to edit on the website directly. So that's why we create another CMS for something like this to make sure that it's really easy to edit. After, I mean, of course, creating the CMS, you need to add the data to it. And we added like, uh, for example, um, the example of kind of meet the team, like we added a section, we connected everything to the content management system. And this way we're able to go ahead and make edits that that much easier and we're able to scale the website in a better way to, to have a more sustainable growth phase even though we created something quickly we want to make sure that we create something which is going to serve us in the long run and then when you go ahead develop the page add the cms make sure that it's responsive you can go ahead to our website and see the webflow pre-launch checklist just because this is our way to verify that every single website that we do is as perfect as possible so you want to go ahead and make sure that you have global heading tags rich text global colors global buttons custom and input fields there are many Many different things you need to take care of to make sure that you actually create a professional pro project in the end so just make sure that you go ahead and view everything from the checklist and it's going to help you to go ahead and launch the website better faster and like which is going to be compliant with seo and like with any, any of the other technical requirements after going through the whole checklist you're going to be doing a lot of work it's probably going to be a weeks of work to go ahead and make sure that everything in the checklist is as perfect as possible you're going to be able to go ahead and jump to the website and see the final result. Of course, the fun part is trying to find a, uh, a nice domain for that. If we ended up with authoritygorillas.com, so you can go ahead and view the website directly today on authoritygorillas.com to go ahead and explore everything we've done in the past few video series and just follow the process on that front. So that's it, we're live. So we wanted to go ahead and show you the brief overview of the whole process, just to make sure that you can understand that. Like when you start working on your own uh, projects, it's probably gonna take a lot more time in the end. But the, the thing is like, the process should be simple, but you should be really picky about small details in the process itself. And that's how I like to look at anything we're doing at the studio. Make things as simple as possible, but make sure that you're really, really picky about those small things that you're implementing onto every single website. And in the end, you're hopefully gonna have a great product like this. I mean, like we do think that this is a great product. Of course, it's personal opinion. We're just gonna, gonna continue to the next step of actually launching these store clients and finding our first clients kind of for, for the business itself. And yeah, of course, the final thing is like, how are we gonna find clients that's a really good question that we're going to be covering in the final episode of the build to grow series where we're going to be adding analytics we're going to be adding uh, kind of the forms and we're going to be showcasing our tactic into getting the first customer for authority gorilla 